Hello and welcome back to Azure Terraformer. Today we have another mailbag. So Kapil asks the question, um, we have one requirement that we have two RGs, resource groups, one for primary and another for DR. We want to maintain separate state files for primary and DR and these two RGs. And these two RGs should create in a single deployment. How can we achieve? How can we achieve this? So let me condense the requirements as I, as I heard them. So it sounds like we want to have a single deployment for prod and DR. We want to have separate state files to maintain prod and DR and prod and DR should be in different regions. Okay. So looking at what, what we want, we've got prod, we've got DR. We want them to be separate and in separate regions. Let's say DR is in West US. Let's say prod is in East US. Okay. And we want to have separate state files. So we'll have TF state. and a TF state. <clears throat> and those will manage um, each region. Um, this can be achieved now, but it comes down to, do you want, uh, what do you mean by one deployment, a single deployment? If you mean that you can have one Terraform apply, that that basically will produce two state files, then you're you're in for you're in for a rude awakening. That's not how Terraform works. Um, at one Terraform apply within generates one state file um, within within a within a full within a backend. You know, so the key name of your state file when you save it to the backend, that's going to make an individual state file. So. You really have to think about it as, you know, what is the key name that you're going to store each environment in the back end? And that's why um, in my most recent video, I, I append this environment name uh, string as the key. So with TF state, we have a key. And for prod, we would, we would embed the name prod in, in our key. And for DR, we would embed the, the name DR within the key name. And that would ensure that there would be two TF state files, whether we store those state files in the same storage account or, um, if, or different storage accounts, um, it, it, or different or using Terraform workspaces, that's up to us. So there's a number of ways that you can do this, but all of them will, uh, will use two Terraform applies. Like you are going to, you will have to run Terraform apply twice one for prod and one for dr otherwise if you if you have dr and prod in the same terraform apply then they're going to be in the same state file okay um, that's also not a great idea because oftentimes with a dr environment um, what what's the purpose of a dr environment well when when prod is impacted we want DR to come online, right? And in fact, what, what usually ends up happening in DR scenarios is usually we don't want to pay for an exact replica of DR to look exactly like prod. So what we actually do is we, we end up um, deploying uh, what, I, what I call a pilot light of our prod environment. And we have the rest of the environment kind of sitting there um, ready to be turned on. Now that can, that can take a number of form factors depending on your, R, your RTO that you want to achieve. But basically there's no sense in having the entire, like a duplicate production environment sitting in your DR environment waiting if your RTO doesn't demand that. Um, there are some RTOs that, that would demand that. Um, but uh, most cases, when you're talking about DR, you know, you, you, it typically doesn't demand that. Um, when the RTO does demand that, you're, you're moving more in the active-active kind of um, deployment strategy. So um, 
because uh, Kapil is talking about DR, I'm going to assume that DR is going to be a pilot light. And we want some th some portions of prod, but we want the capability of spinning up DR to be a full prod um, in the case of an impact to prod. And so in that case, you really want to have the same Terraform code provision those environments, right? So the same TF code um, is going to describe what production environment looks like. Um, but when we deploy it to different environments, we may want to customize how we deploy it. That's what, why we use input variables. Um, so if we're going to deploy, deploy a dev environment, right? And we go through this whole cycle, we're going to run TF, we're going to run TF apply. Let me, let me just do this the proper way, right? We're going to run TF apply and create our dev environment. Um, that's going to have a key that's going to have dev embedded within it. It's going to have its own TF state. How, however we store that state file, you know, we can talk about different options for that. And it's going to produce a, our dev environment. Um, but that, again, that's coming from the same code as that we, that we use to provision production. However, um, we're going to have a different file for our dev environment. We'll call it dev dot tf vars, you know, and maybe we're going to change the skew size, you know, to be small or whatever. I'm, I'm, you know, we're going to have four cores and eight, eight gigs of RAM or two cores and four gigs of RAM. Um, but in our prod dot tf vars, we're going to, we're going to say the skew size is large, right? So we have different variable configuration for the same Terraform code. We're going to provision the same things. We're just making it smaller. Maybe we don't have as many uh, VMs. Maybe the VMs are smaller, um, that sort of thing. That's how we use the same code using variables to, con to control what goes to dev, what goes to prod, and we don't waste money. Like there's no sense in running a full, you know, 20, 21 node cluster in dev when it's just going to be me, you, and you know Sally, you know, deploying our, our test branches to it, you know, whatever. Um, now for DR, this is where it gets a little tricky, right? So with DR, there's whole remember there's entire swaths of stuff that we probably don't even want to deploy, and we have to decide what we don't want to deploy based on how much it costs, right? So if it's like a key vault. Um, if it's like a storage account and it, if it's a log analytics workspace or something like that, where, um, it, it charges you based on microtransactions, based on usage, then you might as well just go ahead and provision it. Um, but if it's your heavy metal, you know, like your VMs, um, stuff like that, that, that is, that's going to cost a lot of money. Um, then you probably don't want to provision it. Um, you probably want to turn it off. And that can also be achieved using um, very uh, tac tactically placed input variables to your Terraform code. And so um, in your dr.tfrs, what you're going to do is, in, like you're also going to have a SKU variable. So you're going to have all the same variables, right? Um, you're, 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 most of those values are probably going to look like prod right? Because you want DR to be prod eventually when the time is right. But you're also going to have a flag that says, uh, and you can call this whatever, um, you, can, you can name it however you want. But basically, you're going to say, um, enable uh, full environment, enable everything, okay, <laughs> enable everything. And that is going to be of type bool and for dr you're going to set it to false right Ooh, i can't spell but for prod you're going to set it to true and for dev you're going to set it to true because you want a full environment um, but this boolean flag will in set in the dr in the dr um, module like you're going to set it to false 
that impact is going to basically say after when we go down and we provision DR, we're not going to we're not going to deploy this and we're not going to deploy that. We're not going to deploy this, but we are going to deploy um, our database so that we can get a so that we can get a SIP from prod. Right. Um, and also there may be additional apparatuses. I'm going to draw I'm going to represent it down here. This is like our special DR thing. Maybe this is like extra infrastructure that's going to replicate data from a target environment where you literally point it at prod. You point it at a specific environment that you want to replicate data from. Um, and so DR is in a sense dependent on your production environment. Maybe this is like a database sync or an object replication or something like that. This is extra stuff, not stuff you want to take away, but it's extra stuff that always has to be there for DR. You'll have another flag that says, you know, DR extras. Okay, I'm just bad names. And you set it to true in DR and you set it to false in all the other environments, obviously, because those environments are not, um, are not DR environments. And then on those resources that you provision in DR, um, if the DR extras is true, then you provision that extra stuff and you and then that thing attaches, latches on to prod or whatever environment you configure it to latch onto and DR is healthy. So again, back to Kapil's question, um, we, we, each environment needs to be in a separate state file. Okay, that's, that's a main point. Um, we can control how we deploy each environment by the nature of the environment. Like if it's a full fledged environment, just smaller for different life cycles for testing or, or dev or load testing or whatever, um, or for other non-functional purposes like DR, like maybe we don't need to deploy everything, right? Um, those should be controlled through smartly placed input variables that control what gets deployed and, and how it gets deployed. Okay. Um, the last thing is a single deployment. So when, so that comes down to, okay, a deployment is not a Terraform apply. Uh, a Terraform apply is part of a deployment. Um, so you might run Terraform apply and then deploy some code. Um, you might run Terraform apply and then update your schema in your database and do, do Delta schema updates into, into your database, whatever you're doing there. Um, so there, there may be a lot of things that you chain together after a Terraform, Terraform apply. So I, I don't want us to get caught up around this idea that Terraform apply equals deployment. That's not, that's not what it, what it is in a very, in a very simplistic, you know, very simple solution, maybe. Um, but that's usually you know, in a more robust solution. That's it's usually just a piece of that puzzle. Um, <clears throat> so from a DR standpoint, when we want to do a deploy, typically, I'm, and I'm just going to go over here, right? Um, developer uh, submits a PR. Okay, um, that PR uh, triggers a build that will basically do a plan. Um, against against our prod environments and, and other environments, whatever environments we want to do, right? Um, we approve the PR. Somebody approves and we merge. So we, we approve it and we merge into main, okay? And then we do another another build. We know that, um, maybe build is not the right term. Maybe, maybe I should refer this to as pipeline. We run a pipeline. Right, pipeline. We run a pipeline. And this pipeline is going to run and apply to prod. Now, if prod and uh, DR are, the, are supposed to, if DR is really part of prod, it's a separate environment, but it is, it needs to be in lockstep with prod then our pipeline should really just, you know, okay, to run apply on prod and run an apply on DR, right? And of course, we'd, prob we'd probably also want to run plan um, on both of those two so that we could review both of the plans um, in both of those Terraform applies. Um, and so basically your pipeline is going to run pro a prod um, 
Terraform apply on prod, and then it's going to run a Terraform apply on DR. And like, like I mentioned earlier, this symbiotic relationship between dev and prod, um, you're pro you probably have dependencies on DR uh, or dependencies on prod from your DR environment anyway. So if you're going to make updates to prod, it makes sense that you would probably make that a sequential step in your deployment. Okay, let's update prod. Let's update DR so that it, like whatever new new stuff is 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 in prod and stable and sitting there, and then we can update DR and then attach ourselves to it, right? Um, so anytime you have like that sort of relationship between multiple environments, you're going to have to be very thoughtful about that process because there may be things that you need to do to DR to prep it for changes to D for prod. Like maybe you need to detach something. Um, and then run and apply uh, for prod, and then you need to reattach DR, right? So that, that, that's, we're getting into Terraform sandwich uh, territory, where you run Terraform applies with different variables uh, having different values, um, which is a more advanced technique for these types of mechanics. But um, yeah, so basically, back to Kapil's question, um, separate state files for prod and DR. Um, that's, that's good. You should use the same code though. Um, in, unless your DR, DR environment's radically different, but your, your, the same code should be deployed to DR as it is to prod, as it is to dev, just turn off certain features that you don't want running all the time. Um, and make, make an input variable so that you can flip them on easily when an incident occurs. And then lastly, the single deployment you know, is, is a, is really, um, your pipeline, your pipeline is your deployment. Terraform apply is a step in that process. So if you, if you have two, uh, codependent environments or dependent environments like DR and prod, your deployment is truly going to be two Terraform applies. Um, and that's going to allow you to set up, um, prod in one region, DR in another region, separate state files and allow for DR to, to eventually be flipped, enabled to be full prod, um, but live in a kind of co, uh, what, what is that, what bears do? Uh, the sleepy state. <laughs> um, the sleepy state that bears go into when, when they're like during winter. Um, that's basically what a DR environment is doing. So uh, I hope this helps. Uh, Kapil, you know, in, in terms of like what you're trying to accomplish, um, you know, and, uh, let me know, um, and, uh, trying something new today. So played with, played with my whiteboard and hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, keep the questions coming. I'm having a great time, you know, fielding all these questions and thinking about these problems. Um, so it's a lot of fun and, uh, I hope you, I hope you enjoy it as well. Um, anyways, smash that like button. And, uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Um, I think now that I got my little system set up, we'll be doing more whiteboard sessions like this. Um, if you guys like it, so, um, make sure you ring that little bell so that you know, next time my video drops. Thanks again. Cheers. This is Azure, Azure Terraformer signing off.